What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about how do you train for maximum muscle growth? How do you optimize your training to get as jacked as possible, okay? That's what we're talking about. Now, I'm not the most jacked person in the world, okay? But I used to be skinny fat. I used to weigh, I don't know, maybe 78 kilos, maybe less. Uh, I don't remember uh, exactly. I now weigh 102, okay? So this is a system I've developed over sort of 16 years of learning the hard way and now this is what I do with clients who want to optimize muscle growth as much as possible okay so we're talking about how do you optimize muscle growth we're not talking about strength we're not talking about fat loss we're not talking about productivity or anything else this is purely focused on just muscle tissue hypertrophy as they call it okay so we're going to cover what type of training you should do how often you should train uh, everything a to z everything that you need to know to uh get as jacked as possible okay so let's get into it so first thing you need to consider is what type of training should you do now this might be obvious to most of you but just in case it's not you know some people like to do crossfit some people like to do high rocks and hit and all these other things and they're great and they're fun and especially in a group setting it can be motivating but if you want to optimize for muscle growth specifically you need to be doing resistance training you need to be doing weightlifting and you need to be doing a specific type of weightlifting which is more similar to what bodybuilders do rather than powerlifters which uh, we'll get into in a minute okay so now the rest of what i'm going to talk about is there's a little bit of theory and then at the end i'm going to give specific instructions of what works best what i prefer what generally works best uh, whether you're a beginner or advanced okay so the first most important variable uh, to get right when it comes to lifting weights is exercise execution how are you doing that exercise because if you don't execute the ex exercise properly okay you're not gonna um, get a correct stimulus on the muscle you're not gonna work the muscle it's just not gonna grow okay so we need to make sure for every single exercise we're doing are we executing the exercise properly now, if you're brand new and you don't know how to do that, well, uh, you need to watch some YouTube videos, uh, maybe, uh, you know, hire a coach or, you know, buy some training programs or, or download an app or something like that just to make sure you're doing the exercise properly, okay? Now, the second biggest factor to consider is how hard you should train, okay, and how much effort sh you should put in. And I'm going to give some specific instructions at the end, but uh, I'm just giving you a bit of theory right now so you kind of grasp the basics. But in case you didn't know, you're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to put some effort in. I see a lot of people, <coughs> excuse me, in the gym, they're simply just not working hard enough, okay? If you don't work hard and you don't train close to failure, you're not going to uh, stimulate uh, you know, to the brain uh, and to the body that it needs to grow stronger. So if you don't work hard enough, it's pointless okay so you got to make sure you're putting in enough effort to stimulate growth next biggest mistake that I see people make is the tempo okay because um, specifically if we're focused on hypertrophy and growing muscle tissue rather than actual like powerlifting which is more about force pr production we really care about the eccentric portion of uh, of an exercise okay so if you imagine like a, a bicep curl this would be the uh, concentric um, part of the mo uh, movement and this would be eccentric okay and what a lot of people do is they'll just ignore uh, the second half of the exercise but that's actually where a lot of growth uh, comes from so we really want to focus on that part actually and a good tempo that I like to do is for one second to contract and then you know maybe depending on the exercise two to four seconds on the way down one second up maybe squeeze hold it for like half a second or a second and then four on the way down one hold for one down for four hold it and back up okay so tempo is very important slow the tempo down chances are you're not doing the tempo slow enough most people this is, these are just blanket recommendations guys okay slow the tempo down and then progressive overload we need to make sure over time we're gradually making our training harder because you go in you go in the gym you train hard your body recovers and it gets used to this new workload if you carry on doing the same thing eventually you're just going to plateau and you're not going to make any progress 
I don't want that to happen to you. So we need to make sure we're progressively overloading the muscle. How do we do that? Well, there's a few different variables we can, we can change, okay? First one is frequency. How often do we want to hit a muscle group, okay? You know, do we want to hit a muscle group once a week, twice a week, maybe even three times a week, depending on the muscle group and how advanced you are? That's an option which we're going to talk about in a second. Next one is intensity, and this is related to effort, okay? Intensity is just how, uh, how hard the exercise is to perform, you know, the actual weight that you're doing. Uh, a higher intensity is a higher weight, generally a harder exercise to perform okay so to overload we could increase the weight so say if last week we did eight reps of bench press at 100 kg uh, next week we could do um, you know eight reps at 105 kg or six reps at 105 kg so we're putting the weight up that's one way to progressively overload and then volume volume is simply just the number of sets that you do uh, how much work you get done in uh, a training session Okay, so now with the theory out of the way, let's get into the juicy part, okay? These are specific recommendations that pretty much work for every single person. Now, I just wanna caveat this and just say, everyone is slightly different and I encourage you to, you know, follow these recommendations and then just play around with different variables and monitor your results and see which you prefer and which you enjoy the most and what you feel is most um, productive for you. Uh, and if you obviously if you want to speed up your progress even more you can hire a coach which is not uh, which is always an option as well anyway first thing to do how many reps should you do for each set okay personally uh, well for, for for muscle growth for hypertrophy it needs to be above eight minimum is a absolutely minimum is a if I do a set because uh, I only really care about muscle growth to be honest I don't really care about getting stronger if I do a set and I'm not just testing my strength and it's below eight reps, I almost feel like it's a bit of a waste, okay? My personal preference is between 12 to 15. I feel like that's the sweet spot for me. Uh, I would much rather do a set of 15 where the last rep is failure rather than do a set of eight or 10 where the set is uh, where the last rep is to failure. I might be working the same, but I just feel that just that extra bit of volume, those extra uh, reps in the set, just I just seem to respond better from it. I get a bit of pump from it as well. So my preference is 12 to 15 if you're optimizing purely for muscle growth, okay? Next um, variable to consider is how many sets, <coughs> excuse me, should you do per exercise? Now, this is really going to vary quite a lot depending on whether you're a beginner or whether you're quite advanced. Now, if you're a total beginner, you could just get away with one working set. Um, but, you know, as a general rule of thumb, I like to say two sets for beginners. And if you're advanced, you're probably going to be doing four or five, up to four or five working sets. Again, it depends on the exercise, guys. Uh, but as long as you're somewhere in that range, you should be good to go how many uh, exercises should you do per muscle group okay now it depends on the muscle bigger muscles usually require more exercises because there's just more complicated movements uh, but you're looking at anywhere from three to five so for example um, if you're training your shoulders you've got three parts to your shoulders you might just do like a uh, an exercise like a press which works the front part uh, some laterals which works uh, the side part and then some rear uh, delts flies to work your rear delts okay so it depends on the muscle okay i'm not going to go into specific muscles and exercises because we would just be here all day i'm just going to keep this short and sweet but you're looking at three to five ex exercises per muscle group okay and then the next thing to consider <coughs> excuse me is the type of exercises compound movements or isolation because if you listen to some people out there they're like you only need to do compound exercises to to make gains and make progress and while i don't disagree with that and i think compound movements should always have a place in your training uh, i don't i don't think some compound exercises specifically squats and deadlifts are the best for pure hypertrophy and the reason being is because they're very fatiguing on the body, 
okay and ideally we want to stimulate the muscle as much as possible without fatiguing the body because if we stimulate the muscle as much as possible without fatigue it means we can train more frequently we can train that muscle group more frequently okay so squats and deadlifts you can do them uh, are they the best exercises for pure muscle growth no they can help but as a general rule of thumb what I like to do is for any muscle group uh, that you can do I would do the compound movements first and then the isolations afterwards it's sort of in a, in a training session okay do like so so for example for chest you might do bent I always do uh, some kind of incline press first which is a compound movement because it's gonna work it's gonna work my pecs it's also gonna work my tries as well and then I would move on to sort of like flies which is more of a more of an isolation exercise does that make sense uh, so I would definitely would not ignore isolation exercises because they can be crucial for <coughs> targeting muscles which otherwise will be hard to hit so I would definitely consider isolation uh, exercises next thing to consider this is a big one is range of motion and I see so many people get this wrong and not just range of motion actually is I try and uh, work at least one of my exercises for each muscle group I try and do the exercise in a lengthened position so what do I mean by that well say like triceps you can do like a tricep rope extension which is a common one but you can actually do a similar exercise where it's overhead rope extension okay and now if you look at my tricep here and my arm even this is already stretched out at the, at the starting point whereas here there's no stretch at all so simply by just doing the same extension but over my head okay I'm getting a greater range of motion and the, generally the, the greater the range of motion you can get the more muscle tissue uh, you're gonna build the better it's gonna be for hypertrophy specifically if you can get your muscles in that length of position it's not always possible it depends on the exercise but if you can make sure you're performing every single exercise with full range of motion <coughs> as much as possible uh, and then obviously uh, just try and get in the length of position uh, and also cardio what do you think about cardio now beware of doing too much cardio uh, because that's going to make it difficult for you to build muscle for example when I used to train when I was younger and I was also playing football it was so much harder just because I was simply playing so much football and doing so much running and cardio uh, so if you're doing a lot of cardio that is gonna hurt muscle group but equally don't do no cardio you know I mean you don't have to go on a treadmill or on the bike my favorite form of cardio is simply walking walking outside ideally you get in the Sun obviously it depends where you live ideally you're in nature as much as possible walking is so underrated not just from like uh, from like a fitness perspective but also from a health perspective also from like a mental perspective just to keep your mind just to clear your mind just to get you in a good headspace walking is super underrated so uh, if you even if you do no cardio but you just do one walk every day <coughs> one 30 minute walk maybe you know two <coughs> excuse me <coughs> still a little bit ill <coughs> okay right that is all the tips I've got for you all right so 8 to 15 reps two sets if you're a beginner four to five sets per exercise if you're more advanced three to five exercises per muscle group compound movements then isolation make sure you do both be wary of high fatiguing compound movements like squats and deadlifts make sure you work your muscles in a full range of motion and don't forget to do a little bit of cardio at least but don't do too much that is it guys if you do everything here you should become an absolute beast I want you to go out there and build as much muscle as humanly possible okay I know you can do it you wouldn't have watched this full video if you didn't have all the tools available to, to go out there and do it this is the video that I wish I had when I was younger because I wasted so many years doing the wrong thing you now have this information so there is no excuses for you guys okay uh, but just remember that all of this all of this is pointless you can have the most perfect most optimized training routine at all like you can have, it can be the best training routine in the world but if your nutrition is not on point if your lifestyle is not on point if your you know your supplements are not needed but 
say uh, if you take supplements if all those other aspects are not on point it could kill your gains you could actually make zero progress depending on how bad your lifestyle and your nutrition is but don't worry i've got future videos uh, coming up talking about you know nutrition how to maximize muscle growth with regards to your nutrition and everything else so thank you very much for watching uh, you can head to jamesweetland.com for coaching and i'll talk to you in the next one